thank you. Uh, I would like to talk about um, the services um, and the work that is done at IHP in Germany regarding um, EPIC technology. So for those of you um, who do not know us, uh, IHP is in Germany, it's located in Frankfurt, uh, but in Frankfurt uh, on the Oder. So it's in the very east of Germany, it's like one hour uh, by car uh, from Berlin. And here you see our premises. And the most prominent here is, is our clean room. I will talk about that a bit later. Here's some figures uh, for the introduction. Um, so um, we are a government owned uh, company, um, like uh, um, a yeah, public company um, that is uh, uh, dealing with uh, research and development uh, in the areas of high speed communication. Uh, and uh, you see that um, we have an annual budget of uh, around 50 million euros, uh, personnel uh, above 300, and um, our third party funds, uh, um, they have been just exceeding uh, 20 million euros uh, last year. In terms of technology, um, uh, IHP uh, is, ha uh, is providing services uh, run on uh, R&D uh, and prototyping pilot line. Um, the pilot line is uh, in its essence, a 1000 square meter um, class one clean room with a capacity of about 100 wafer starts per week. And the technologies which um, are fabricated in that clean room are RF silk and germanium uh, based by CMOS uh, in a 24 hours, seven days a week mode. 200 millimeter technologies and the CMOS nodes are 0.25 and 0.13. Um, the technologies that we run in that clean room on an, in, in, are on an industrial level. Uh, and therefore these technologies are also provided to external customers. Um, here is a, a, a very brief overview of our technologies. Um, uh, sorry. I cannot change the cursor here. So here's a very brief overview of our technologies. Qualified are purely electronic and we have what we call early stable um, access. And that's where we host the um, photonic and ele photonic electronic technologies. Um, I would like to underline that we have a partner, it's IHP Solutions um, and IHP Solutions basically is responsible for the uh, commercial and industry oriented um, services. Um, and therefore um, this presentation is also covering what is services that are actually provided by IHP solutions. So um, this really needs to be underlined. Um, IHP solutions uh, is basically our interface for these uh, services. So Phil Silicon Photonics uh, for us means photonic electronic system integration. And um, that requires that you have the basic photonic building blocks available, such as uh, high-speed detectors, um, high-speed modulators, and of course, integrated optics um, based on cheap nano wave guides. Um, what is specific, what differentiates us from many other uh, photonic integrated service uh, circuit providers is that we also have available uh, in the technology, uh, very high speed bipolar transistors. So we have bipolars with uh, more than 200 gigahertz uh, FTF max. Um, and everything is combined uh, in a monolithic technology, which we call photonic by CMOS. So in this photonic by CMOS technology, you get on a single wafer, so on the same silicon localized areas for photonics, localized areas for electronics, and so a full feature uh, set by CMOS. And this is combined electrically by the uh, back end of line, which is common for photonics and for electronics. Um, in terms of integrated for, uh, um, nano waveguide technology, um, this is very much standard, uh, what you know from other FAPs. Um, we have nano waveguides based on 220 nanometer uh, SOI. 
which allows you to do, um, let's say, very compact uh, silicon optical circuits. You can do uh, routing bands of a few uh, micrometers in radius. You can make uh, grating couplers. You can make, uh, um, uh, yeah, basically all kinds of, of integrated optics uh, that is also available uh, or that you have seen in other um, boundaries or from other institutes. The building block that come, first comes into play when uh, you talk about um, communication is typically the modulator. Our modulators are uh, not provided as modulators, but what we do is we provide a phase shifter and the phase shifter can then be used to build uh, a custom modulator as you uh, want it. And the phase shifters, uh, they are engineered to have an efficiency of uh, around 2.9 uh, volt per centimeter at uh, minus one volt reverse, sorry, at minus two volt reverse bias. And uh, there uh, around, um, we have an insertion loss of 10 dB per centimeter because of the precarious. Uh, junction capacitance you see on the, on the right side. So these are very typical values that you observe with uh, many standard uh, PN type phase shifters uh, from, from uh, foundries all over the world. In terms of detection, um, uh, the development of the required building block took, took several years, but in 2015, uh, we could demonstrate uh, for the first time uh, a very high speed germanium detector 3db bandwidth uh, above 60 gigahertz uh, and a very high C band as well as O band responsivity um, around one amps per watt. Um, I think it was one of the first demonstrations where people could show uh, that you can break this typical trend line between responsivity and, and bandwidth. And uh, up to now, IHP detectors uh, are among the uh, fastest that you can get in, in a silicon foundry service. The full integration, the full monolithic uh, um, technology, I try to depict here in, in two cross sections, one for the transmit side and one for the receive side. Um, here you see the, um, let's say, typical uh, rip waveguide structures that are used for the phase shifters. And uh, the phase shifters, uh, so the photonic building block here is um, connected with the electronics via the back end of line. The back end of line uh, in this technology comprises two thin metals and two thick metals. These two thick metals, especially important for the RF. Um, and everything is uh, located on a common substrate. However, the substrate has this bulk properties here on the right side and has the SLI properties here on the left. Uh, very similar for the receive side, here the um, HPTs, here the uh, photo detectors, uh, here is the back end. Um, however, this is not a picture of the latest uh, generation photo detector, it's an, it's an older generation, uh, but it, it looks very similar. So both are available on the same substrate uh, for uh, your integration purposes for the solution that you're looking for. Uh, in the past years, we have uh, been able to, to demonstrate um, quite successfully some nice uh, systems. Here is 64 gigabyte transmission that I think was presented at OFC 2019. Um, so this, uh, as to one uh, characteristic of the Mazinda that you see here um, is something that was uh, demonstrated on the phase shifters I have shown you before. So you can achieve very flat characteristics uh, uh, up to 40 gigahertz and that then allows you to, um, uh, to do modulation up to 64 gigabyte as was shown in this uh, system experiment here. On the receive side, um, uh, very similar. We have uh, performed here, this is in a, in a collaboration with a group from Paderborn, um, demonstrations uh, of, of uh, coherent receivers. This is again, coherent receiver 
uh, that works um, up to 64 uh, gigabyte uh, transmission. Um, and what you see here is a very compact circuit, of course. Uh, we have the integrated photo detectors that are not visible on the picture. Um, but the overall circuit really just comprises 2.5 or is, is 2.5 times uh, 1 times 1 millimeter in, in, in size. And it uh, is indeed photonic and electronics um, uh, combined together. Yeah. Um, I already have the summary here. Um, what I would like to underline for this market focus session that there is this IHP platform for high performance photonic electronic integration. Um, I have not talked about the details, but we have APIC demonstrations that reach a gate count of uh, 400K. So you can uh, indeed build extremely compact C and O band uh, APICs that can be part for your um, uh, solution that you want to provide in data center, for instance. And these services are available um, to industry uh, as well as academia. I would also like to point you towards uh, a market focus talk that is coming next. This is the talk by Sven Otter from Sequoia, uh, who will talk about the paradigm shift in the optical communication market. Um, and this talk is very complementary to what I have been talking about here, because uh, it's, it's the use of this technology. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, and if there is questions, of course. Thank you very much, Lars. Um, um, I would like to invite uh, uh, attendees to post question, if you can, on the Q&A or in the chat. I think we'll try to monitor both. Um, I have a quick question while we um, maybe wait for a couple of questions to arrive on the on the on the Q and A, and that's um, what 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 are, what are the prospects, Lars, for um, modulators and receivers working in a sort of broader range than say the forty or forty odd nanometers of the C band? Is that something that can be done relatively straightforwardly, or are there are limitations which prevent that? And what would be the cost and performance limitations? Uh, so O and C band are not really a, a limitation, I think, for the modulators. It's more for the um, detectors because we have the germanium detector, uh, and germanium has an optical cutoff basically around 1600 nanometers. Um, so um, I, th I think that uh, germanium detectors can still cover the um, L band. Uh, of course, they can go to, to shorter wavelengths. Um, the main limiting point from the point of view of optical bandwidth, I think, is the optical interface. Um, the demonstration that I showed here, they were done with uh, grating couplers, um, but it is possible to use um, spot size converters um, that allow for horizontal coupling, and these optical interfaces, they easily achieve uh, bandwidth of 100 nanometers optical bandwidth. Uh, this can be done in the C band, this can be done uh, in the O band. So uh, there's, there's quite some, some freedom there. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions in the QOA, okay. Q and A or the chat. So I'd like to thank you very much, Lars, for, uh, for your presentation, for your very interesting presentation and for bearing with us while we had some teething problems at the start. Uh, no problem.